10 years ago I decided I needed to have videos of labs so students who are absent could make up the lab without me having to keep all the equipment set up or reset it up. With COVID-19 this year, it became clear that having more of these would be quite helpful. So you can find all of them on my video distance learning labs link here. And here's the page and so far I've created three of these. A constant velocity lab, often called the buggy lab, a constant acceleration lab, a cart rolling down a ramp, and Newton's second law lab, often called the modified Atwoods. These labs are based upon modeling instruction paradigm labs, which are discovery activities rather than confirmation labs. Well, I suppose you could use them as confirmation labs. I prefer to use them to guide students towards developing the models of constant velocity, constant acceleration, and the acceleration as a function of net force and mass. Each activity has a teacher note section that provides you with information about how the videos were shot, what can you expect from each video, and other helpful tips. Most activities include an introductory video that you can use to introduce the activity to your students. There is little or no narration on these videos. I design them so you can pause them where you desire and add narration to match your instructional goals. I'll show you the Newton's Law Lab first because that's the last one I've done and so it's the clearest. When you click on the teacher notes page, it's going to ask you for a password. The password is thermodynamics. There's a little hint up here. Little blue bar up here reminds you, hey, give me comments, give me feedback, what would work better for you next time, what's working for you. So I know I can make changes if needed. So on the teacher page, I start with some background, some cases learning objectives, introductory video, here's that one, you can look at it here. Um, your students can also look at it on their page. Again, no narration allows you to decide where you want to stop it. Each video will have measuring devices, timer, tape measure, meter stick, something with measurements on it, force meter. Everything's on there for the students to read. All they have to do is stop the video in appropriate places. The introductory video will give a greater overview. So your students are just going to see the timer and the track and the information here. They are not going to see this. So it's important, to, it's important that you show them that this video at least to, so they can see what's going on. Why is this cart accelerating? So eventually we get down to the student pages. So again, some more information for you. How accurate do I think they should be? Um, then here's our student pages. You've got a link you can embed or if you have to type it out, there's a bitly short link there for you. So let's take a look at the student page. Here's the student page. Again, they get this introductory video. They can look at it. They can go back and look at it if they need to. So again, here's our videos. Changing system with constant force. Changing force with constant system. You can assign these videos based upon the number for your students. In this case, M is, tells, tells you it's the mass videos. F says it's the force videos. So they can, they can play with this back and forth. They don't have to get it right the first time. So in this case, we're going to record the position 0.4 meters and the time 57.46. Once they record that data, they're going to let it go. And I suggest in this stopping it somewhere between 70 and 80 to avoid parallax for those of us teachers who care about that. So here they'd say, oh, it's 75. It's at 58.32. And they might say that's a little blurry. Some of them will be more blurry. They can just stop and start it again and get a better reading there. So if they get something blurry, stop and start. Here now we're maybe we'd say at 80, 79, 78, 77 and a half, a more careful student might say 77 and a half. Here's all the information they need. In this case, I have not combined it. Here's the system mass. Everything's right here for them to see. They have to record that. And I have not given anything on how to calculate acceleration. I remind them for calculating acceleration that we've gone through our, we already developed this in class. If the initial velocity is zero, then I can just say, hey, acceleration delta x is one half at squared, right? So they can rearrange that and solve for a. 
one last thing I try to do is I put in here, well, how accurate can you expect them to be? So I've gone through here and these are getting, I'm getting 10, you know, 1.2, 6.3% off. In this case, the predicted force or the predicted mass. Um, I have here a link for you to all the videos. So we can go here. This is the PDF you would get. Again, it's got the links for them all. And here's my calculation of approximate acceleration. So you can get a sense of what range should they be in.